Hi, Corey. Hey, Martin. You work for Etsy, right? Uh, and you use Google Cloud? Yeah, I manage two infrastructure teams at Etsy. We design and build custom platforms on Google Cloud and make it easy for Etsy engineers to create and manage all types of services that help power Etsy's incredible marketplace. Welcome to the show, Corey. I've spent way too much time on Etsy.com uh, looking for gifts, both for others and for myself, actually. Yes, it can be addictive to browse the handmade and vintage items in our huge marketplace. And Corey, what do you do at Etsy? Well, I've been at Etsy since 2019, and I've been leading teams that build and support Etsy's foundational platforms and services. You must have seen Etsy grow quite a bit since 2019, right? Yes, Etsy has been growing very fast. The revenue has nearly tripled since I started there. Of course, with that kind of growth, we've seen some very interesting engineering challenges, especially for my SRE and platform teams. Fortunately, Google Cloud has made scaling and operations much easier. I guess you also had to scale up the dev teams then. Yes, and as we've scaled up, we've needed to make sure our engineers can continue to be productive. They need to be able to focus on code and business features and not have to worry too much about infrastructure. So in 2022, I got the chance to help create a new piece of infrastructure from the ground up, Etsy service platform. Now I'm leading that team, plus an SRE team that supports many of Etsy's search and machine learning applications. Etsy's service platform. Uh, sounds like uh, platform engineering. Yeah, that's right. So Google Cloud is really flexible and it supports all the building blocks we need for a platform that fits how our engineers write and deploy services. Right. Uh, Google Cloud is quite flexible. It is. But with Etsy service platform, we were able to extract the common infrastructure tasks and tools so our engineers wouldn't have to repeat those every time they created a new service. To give you some examples, the platform provides observability, CI, CD, and security out of the box. So our engineers don't have to figure those out and they can just focus on their code. That makes sense. Uh, let's say I'm a developer at Etsy and I've been asked to write a new service for calculate uh, shipping discounts, for example. How would Etsy service platform help me? Well, first, you do a one-time install of our platform on your computer, just using a Git clone of a repo. And then you'd use our ESP command line tool to start creating your service. So what we've done is whittle down the creation process to about three or four simple steps. First off, you'd run the ESP init command to scaffold the new shipping service. This command sets up a new service on your machine and includes a boilerplate protobuf definition file. So it's in this file where you'll define the structure of the messages your service will use and also the endpoints your service will expose to the outside world. For example, you might add an endpoint that calculates the shipping discount during a promotion. Hmm, got it. So the calculate discount request message would have two integers, the product ID and the promotion ID. Then my service would respond with a calculate discount response message, which contains the discount percentage. Once you're done with your service definition, you're almost ready to start coding. But first, you're going to need to select which language you'd like to code in, and then run the CLI's ESP generate command. We've named this step generate because it generates all the templates you'll need to start coding in the language that you've chosen. We'll choose Go for our shipping discount service example. I like Go. This will run for a while as it's installing packages and creating various files that will be needed to build and run the service. And now that it's done, we have our auto-generated code stubs where I can just start coding the business logic. For example, this service might return a discount of 30% for product ID 100, 40% for product ID 200. And if it's neither the discount, we'll set it at zero. So then the service would return the discount into the calculate discount response. 
And now you can run it locally on your machine? Yeah, you can run the service locally with the ESP run command. So under the hood, the command will assemble all the components of your service into a Docker image and then run the service in a local container. Finally, you can use the grp curl command to invoke your service with different arguments, just to make sure it's working as expected. Very nice. Uh, so let's say you've tested it locally and it works as expected. Uh, how would you test it in Google Cloud? So there's an ESP deploy command that deploys the service to CloudRun. We've created a special sandbox environment in Google Cloud. And behind the scenes, the deploy command will containerize the service and it'll run various gcloud commands to deploy it to CloudRun. Thank you for showing us this. Uh, why do you choose CloudRun for Etsy's service platform? Well, we looked at a few runtime options, but CloudRun was the most elegant, simple option for us. CloudRun takes care of a lot of the complexity of running containerized services whether it's just a simple service or something that handles high traffic volumes. For us, Cloud Run really helped us quickly achieve the goal of decoupling the infrastructure from the business logic of the service. Thanks for telling us about this. I have some questions, Corey. Sure, go ahead. You went serverless with Cloud Run for Etsy's service platform. Uh, did you ever consider Kubernetes instead? Actually, Kubernetes was one of the runtimes that we considered originally. But we were very focused on getting something up and running quickly that could handle the majority of our service use cases, which were all stateless. CloudRun handled most of the container management complexity out of the box. And this flexibility meant that our team could really focus on the important stuff, such as the core features of the platform and the developer experience. And how has CloudRun performed for you in production? Honestly, CloudRun has been very stable in production. We had one short incident where the performance of some services was impacted, uh, but we worked with the Google support folks to help us navigate through that and make sure that it wouldn't happen again. Um, other than that, we've been using CloudRun for our service platform for almost two years now, and it's been very smooth sailing. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Corey. Uh, thanks for joining me today and sharing your experiences with platform engineering and uh, with Cloud Run. Thanks for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions, please add them in the comments. Also, please let me know what you think of this episode. I read every single comment. Until next time.